Hey, welcome back. Today I thought I'd take a quick look at two products which I bought last week at the Malaysian Miniature Hobby Show. The show had some great models on display, both in the competition rooms and in the um, clubs from around Asia. I think I saw groups from Hong Kong, uh, Myanmar, Indonesia, and obviously Malaysia as well. If you'd like to take a look at some of the things which are on display, and I'd thoroughly recommend it, then there should be a link to my video about the show in the top right corner right now. So obviously it's impossible to go to a hobby show without buying something. And one of the things I liked about this particular show is that alongside the large manufacturers, there are also quite a few small companies um, which specialize in modeling accessories. So one of these companies was Diabros, who made this uh, grass mat material, which I'm going to check out. And the other company is Yan Models, who made these resin um, pillars. So let's look at the grass mat first. This cost me uh, 60 Malaysian ringgit, which is about 14 US dollars or 11 British pounds. And for that, you get this roll of material, which is supposed to be 14 centimeters by 50 centimeters. And this compares to the model scene terrain mat, which I uh, used in a diorama recently, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, which was about 20 US dollars and was A4 sized. Okay, so let's unroll the mat. This is the first time I've actually unrolled this, so this is genuinely my first impressions. And straight away I can see there's a really nice variation in colour. We've got very light greens, slightly darker greens, yellowy browns, and then darker browns as well. That looks really, really natural. Right, before anything else, let's give this a quick measure. I make that 48 centimetres by about 13, 14, yeah about 13 or 14 so the box had approximately 50 by 14 so I'll give them that and the feel of this is really interesting it's really, it feels quite sturdy it's obviously a synthetic product I really like these um, raised tufts this whole thing reminds me of sort of the Scottish Highlands with the sort of uh, very uneven ground big raised tufts like that stones down here that kind of look like uh, the ground is uh, coming through and then these very nice sort of bare patches here where there's no grass they look a little bit like this sort of a, like a could almost be like a little stream there or a dried up stream in fact I can imagine this if we had it on kind of like a a little hill here, kind of like almost like a little gully there in the middle where there could be a small stream. Some slightly strange, almost white grass at the top. I'm not quite sure that's supposed to be that colour. Okay, and here's a quick close up so you can see a bit better. As you can see, the static grass is really, really sturdy, it's, it's not going to fall out but also it has got a good variety there as well. It does look very natural. And there's those sort of bare sections. And then if we look at the stones, stones look pretty good as well. Sometimes when you get modeling stones, um, they're quite uniform in color, but these, there's a good variety of color. Those look like they're being washed, they've got quite a few little dark areas there as well. Now one thing I might be slightly wary of is some of these sections where there's no grass are a little bit too thin. You can almost, maybe you can't see it on the camera there, but you can actually see through the mat uh, to the table below, especially here at the edge. I don't think it'd be a huge problem, but I think you would definitely need to paint your base um, before you put this grass mat down or you might end up fixing it and seeing white or whatever color your base was. Uh, shining through it. Right, let's compare this now with the uh, model scene mat. This is a mat that I've been using in a diorama recently, which I'm going to upload to my channel soon. Uh, so this was an A4 mat, but obviously I've used some of it. Uh, so if you look at these side by side, obviously they're for different seasons. This is a, a kind of um, autumn mat from model scene. Uh, the model scene mats obviously a lot more uniform both in terms of colour and also in terms of flatness. It's very, very flat mat. And obviously it has these uh, flowers of heavy bits as well. 
these actually have a tendency to fall off quite a lot when you use it. So it's hard to compare them directly because obviously they've got slightly different purposes, but they both look like quite solid mats. So this mat is a slightly unusual shape and it's very long and thin. I don't think that's going to be a huge problem though because normally if you use a grass mat on a diorama you'd have some kind of road either going through it or alongside it or something. So I don't think that'll be a massive problem. So let's throw a vehicle on here now. This is my shroom wagon. It hasn't been weathered yet. You can get an idea of how it blends in. And actually that German tricolored camouflage actually blends in quite nicely there as well. So overall, I'd say that's quite a nice looking grass mat, actually. I'm quite looking forward to using this in a diorama. I do have an idea for how and where I'm going to use it, actually. So the Diobro stall did have four different types of mats. None of them have particular names. This one is Grass Mat 4. They had um, a very sort of dark green, very uniform base kind of mat, uh, which was entirely flat as well. It didn't really uh, appeal to me. They had another mat which was like this one but didn't have the stones on it. And they had another mat which was a kind of yellowy beige kind of burnt grass kind of mat. All of them were the same price. And in fact, even the version that's like this but without the stones is exactly the same price. So I thought, why not get the version with the stones? Now, the gentleman at the Dio Brothers uh, stall did give me his business card. Um, and there's a, a URL on the box as well. But I can't get their website to work for some reason. But I've put the URL in the description below just in case uh, it comes online in the future. So the second product I'm going to look at is this set of resin pillars from Yan Models. Um, this retails normally for about 80 Malaysian ringgit, which is about 20 US dollars, 15 British pounds. Uh, I got it for slightly less than that because it was a 30% discount at the hobby show, uh, but that's the usual price. Uh, Yan Models is a fairly new company. Um, according to Scalemates, they were established in two, uh, 2017. Uh, they seem to specialise in resin buildings. They had some very, very nice ruins on their, um, on their stall. Uh, quite expensive as well, but very, very intricate design. Looked, looked very nice indeed. So opening the box, the pillars are well protected by this synthetic padding material. Uh, there's four types of pillar, and you get two of each type. The quality looks decent. I'll show you some close-ups uh, in a minute. These pillars are 135 scale, so to give you an idea of their size, here they are next to an M3 Stewart. So as you can see, they're clearly bigger than the vehicle, but they're probably not really tall enough or wide enough to represent something like the huge columns that you would find say at the Parthenon in uh, Athens or similar, but you could perhaps model maybe a small temple using them. However, I think more likely I'll be using them as part of a European building, perhaps part of like an entranceway or something for these uh, two curly ones. And I know, for example, that I'll be using at least two of them in an upcoming diorama I have uh, with a ruined church, and I'm going to use them to support the interior of the church, or what remains of the interior of the church. So these pillars actually measure... 10 centimeters, so 135th scale, that is uh, 3.5 meters. Okay, so let's take a look at these pillars closer up. So you can see there's a good amount of detail here. The stone carving looks pretty good. And I think clearly uh, more detailed than you would get in a plastic kit. Looking down the pillar, there is a seam line down there that should be fairly easy to sand off. And then looking down at the bottom, the two halves of the mould don't quite match up. Uh, but that's, again, that's a small problem. It should be possible just to uh, just to sort of uh, realign that with a little bit of sanding and a hobby knife. And this bit at the bottom here is just an excess piece of resin which can be taken off. This second pillar is very similar. Again, good detail at the top. The ridges all the way down the column are also very well defined, very clear. And then some more detail on the base that the pillar stands on. There is that annoying seam line there in the middle, but I think again that should still be fairly easy to take out um, without destroying the surrounding detail, I hope so. For me they're going to be a little bit battered anyway, I'm going to make a few sort of bullet holes and a bit of damage on these pillars. And then this third pillar is similar to the second one, 
uh, with the so the grooves all the way down the pillar, except that it doesn't have the base for it to stand down at the bottom. And again, you can see a little bit of a misalignment there between the two halves. And again, that's just excess resin at the bottom. And the final pillar, this one is unique in the pack, that it's sort of a, a twist in motion here. Very clearly defined, I can see this painting up quite nicely and weathering quite well as well. Very, very minor seam marks on it, but nothing serious. I can see this looking quite nice as sort of a an entrance to a big sort of old mansion style house or something. Or even maybe holding up like an alcove or something inside a church with maybe like a, a figurine inside it or something. Now just like Dio Brothers, Yan Models does have a website, but again I couldn't get it working. Uh, their web server is obviously misconfigured. However, it is quite easy to find Yan Models available on eBay for decent prices. Um, and you can see their resin ruin kits they have there as well. So I hope you've enjoyed that quick look at these two new products. I certainly like looking at products which are from smaller companies and maybe not quite so well known. I think they help to make dioramas a little bit unique. I have plans to use both of these products in upcoming dioramas. So if you would like to see how they turn out, please remember to hit subscribe. And if you find this video useful, then please feel free to hit like and to share the video. And if you haven't checked out my video on the Malaysian Miniature Hobby Show yet, I would thoroughly recommend that you do. It was a really great show with some excellent models and dioramas on display and a really great variety as well.